six, a helping hand with your land. What's up, Messix viewers? I'm Chucky2009. Behind me is my M7060 Kubota. And today we're going to be taking this thing from what I believe is its factory configuration with one set of remote control valves here to three sets. So this way I can have two of these operating and implement and I can get a uh, three point hydraulic top link as well. Now I've never done anything like this before. I understand uh, basically that more or less what we need to do is we need to come in here and remove this plastic panel. And then you can already see, you know, anybody who's ever seen one of these tractors knows it comes with these two extra slots here. And even on the back side of the tractor, there's these two plugs, which I'm assuming we remove, and then we just run our two more cables back here and stack our valves up on top of that one. So, like I said, I've never done this before, but, you know, as Henry Ford says, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're probably right. It doesn't seem too crazy complicated, and I've saved most of the afternoon to do this, or at least get started on it. <laughs> so, this is what we got to work with. We've got two of these remote valve lever kits. You can see these fit all kinds of different models. Actually, the valves themselves fit an even bigger list of all the different models here. And uh, we got instructions for all of these things as well. We got a diagram, uh, all sorts of useful stuff. You know, parts breakdown like exploded view here. And uh, yeah, I've never done anything like this before, but so I'm a little bit anxious, but hopefully we can make this work. And uh, yeah, you guys get to uh, kind of learn with me here. Got to be very careful fishing stuff out of here so we can put all the dirt and grit and hay and mud back in when we're done. Step one, remove the fender inner cover A and remote control lever coupler B figure one. All right, well, this ride starts now. So there's these little plastic trim screws which come out really easily. They loosen with just like probably half a turn of a Phillips head screwdriver. Pop out of here really, really easily, just like that. Or you can launch them underneath the tractor if you prefer to go under there and fish them out like I have to with the third one that was up there. But we got those and then uh, two smaller bolts, one down there and then one right here. So the inner fender is off and there were a few things I had to do which I wasn't really counting on for instance removing this joystick but that's not exactly complicated. It is four bolts uh, and that includes the cover on it as well. Also removed this uh, panel of switches which I guess I probably could have left. You know if I'd done this a bunch of times I could have just popped the wires off the back of this but I didn't have the feel for it yet and I didn't really want to force anything. You know actually I'm going to leave that there. So we removed those and uh... PTO control, everything else in here. So now we can actually see what the heck we're working on. So now that we have removed the plug, we basically just have to feed this cable out. Now we just pop this lip back in. There, ground's in place. And now we can pull this cable in or out as needed. All right, so the first, I wish I knew that of the day, is these two levers are not completely the same. As you can see, one has this wider flat spot here, the other there. So presumably things are just uh, spaced out a little bit better. Um, and I did not realize this, and what happens if you put this one here is it reaches over and interferes with this lever. So I had to switch these around. All right, so here's some extremely rare footage of myself consulting an owner's manual, but there really wasn't that much to it. All you had to do is to assemble these valve bodies per the instructions. Uh, it required little more than just separating them from their packaging material and getting them ready to install on the back of the tractor. Now, again, I've never really messed with uh, installing remote hydraulics on anything before, so I will say I was very pleasantly surprised at just how simple it was to put all these things together. Uh, essentially all these are is just valve body sandwiched together with uh, with o-rings between them and held in place with one cast iron cap So once we got to the back of the tractor I used some compressed air to just blow all the dust and grit and everything Off the back of the machine that I could so we don't have to worry about these things falling into the tractor once we start opening stuff up And uh, as you can see there's just the the one factory valve body with the cast iron cap on top It held in place with three bolts now we removed these bolts and this is important to note because we're not actually going to be replacing uh, Obviously not these bolts because the distance between the tractor and where the cap is is, is going to be a lot larger with three sets of valves instead of one. Uh, we replace these ultimately with some studs 
And uh, th so that's what we do. Now I will say it took a little bit of, uh, of work and jiggling stuff around in order to get all three sets of valves uh, going with the studs running through them because uh, sometimes if you're not careful with this like the uh, the valve body won't want to clear between the stud and the, that back wall of the cab so it's really best if you can take all three valves and just sort of pop them loose and then, and then get all three studs in there and then set this on top of the back of the tractor and then start tightening down the studs into the cast iron rear end of the tractor um, and then from there it was really just a matter of, uh, of torquing down the studs themselves and then we set the cast iron cap back on top of this whole assembly and then sandwiched it down by torquing down the nuts on top of the studs which hold all of this together. Now, from here, one thing I did next was I, uh, I connected the cables from uh, from the lever kits inside the cab that we put together earlier, and I adjusted those as needed. Now, hindsight being 2020, it really would have been a lot easier, and I think the instructions even tell you to do it this way. Um, it would have been a lot easier to adjust these things on the table and then install them. I thought maybe they'd need some more adjustments, but it doesn't appear so that would be the case. So you can, you can assemble all these, you know, on your workbench or whatever. It's really easy to access. I did not, so I have to like reach back behind these valve bodies to get to the jam nuts and everything. Thing. It's not the end of the world. I still made it. it still made it go together. Uh, but again, hindsight being 2020, I would have done that a little bit differently next time. And then from there, it was really just a matter of installing these uh, quick connect couplers. Now, one thing I learned: it's really best if you do this one layer at a time because if you thread in all four of them finger tight, it's really hard to fit in there with a wrench and actually snug them up. It shouldn't require too much snugging of them up because uh, they're held together with um, uh, their o-ring type threads. So just a, just a little bit of torque on this. And then from there, it was really just a matter of replacing the inner fender wall with the joystick and the various switches and controls. I, I know it, on camera, it kind of looks like we majorly took the cab all apart. It really wasn't all that complicated. And uh, this, as with many things in life, really not much to it but to do it. This is the big moment, everybody. That was it. That was the magical moment. All that just so we could have this plate filled up. Also to run some equipment I want to run. But this sure is a nice perk. Tractor looks complete now. I like it. So we got all three now stacks installed, two new ones, and uh, I don't see any leaks anywhere. I think we got the cables set up pretty good, and um, I mean, I think it's ready to hook up and use. So I will say I'm very, very happy with how well that turned out. Also that I caught this before it turned into an accident here. Yeah, so, uh, you know, really I thought that was gonna be a lot harder than it was. Oh no! Losing my thingamajigger here. Much better. Now I will say this really wasn't anywhere close to as difficult as I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be a major struggle. I was afraid I was going to have to take like an entire fender off the tractor, an entire, you know, big section of the cab or whatever. But really it's not bad. Just uh, essentially three bolts you remove, replace them with three studs, add in those valve bodies. One thing I will say is I, uh, in the infinite wisdom that comes with having never done this before, waited to adjust the cables until uh, the valve bodies were on the tractor and therefore what I was adjusting was way back here. So it's hard to fit in there with a wrench or something. Not the end of the world if you do, I still made it work, but uh, it would have been easier to do that, you know, obviously before I got these on here. But you know, like I said, I'd never done it before and we're all kind of learning this together. So that was really it. Uh, parts were perfect, only needed two washers, which to be fair, I probably lost, but <laughs> uh, but everything went together perfectly fine. And I can't wait to try this out. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. 
Gonna do a lot with this tractor this year, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next time. Cheers. But man, how about that? Pivot's so nice and smooth.